Hi there, and welcome to the Little Fern Fibers Knitting and Crafting Journal and Podcast. My name is Ellie, and I am from Wisconsin in the United States, and this is a podcast where I am going to talk about lots of knitting and hopefully soon some spinning and other crafting projects that I have in my brain in the works. Um, we are expecting another little girl to be our second daughter just in a few months time. So this is a good way for me to kind of get my project ideas and creative energy and those wheels spinning and just getting it kind of out of my system before all of that comes. Um, but yeah, uh, if you're following along, thank you so much. I have been really excited to see that people are interested in following along. Um, you're more than welcome to subscribe. Anybody is welcome. Um, it's been really fun to see and connect with people. There have been people from all over in like Lithuania and um, New Zealand and Australia and Sweden and Finland that have reached out um, and in the UK and it's Scotland. I, I love seeing where everybody's from and a lot of makers in Canada and if you are new here or um, if you'd like to say where you're from, I'd love to know. I think that's one of the coolest things about especially the knitting community is that it's so vast and it's a craft that so many people love and just it's so fun to share and talk about and that's I feel like part of the core of why knitting is such a universal craft that so many people love so I'd love to know where you're from I really enjoy seeing that um but again thank you for following along if you are it was fun to see people kind of wanted to join in so um yeah I was gonna talk about a lot of random things today. It's kind of chilly here. It's July, but there's a kind of a windy breeze coming in. So I actually have um, a sweater that I finished a few months ago and it is um, inspired by two knit collage patterns. So I really like the look of their um, kaleidoscope cardigan when they had a knit along a few months ago and then they hadn't released the pattern yet and I wanted to make that. So instead I purchased their pixelated Cardi pattern and I went by that, um, but I kind of tried to have it, have the look and feel of the Kaleidoscope cardigan. So um, I'm happy with how it turned out, but a lot of this is um, hand spun by me. I also spin yarn, I haven't, in a bit just because with the belly it's a little tricky sitting at the wheel lately but um i love spinning yarn and um so a lot of this is just my hand spun that i wanted to incorporate all into one sweater and there's a bunch of just odds and ends um i didn't worry too too much about gauge just because i knew i had a lot of different weights um of yarn and there's even like some fabric strips in here and um there's some ribbon strips too um but yeah i didn't worry too much about gauge and just kind of tried to piece it together and kind of have it match up as i went along but yeah a lot of it is just hand spun that i had and there's even there's like a lot of special little pieces in here. There's like one of the first skeins that I ever spun was this, um, I think it was just Coradale. And then there is yarn in here that Adam, my husband, spun. We did like a little craft swap a couple months ago where he spun yarn and I turned a wooden bowl, but there's some of his yarn in here. So that's super special. And there's um, yeah, some of like my first yarns that I spun years ago. And then just 
other special little little skeins that kind of all have a story and then this mustard and this hot pink are um, Malabrigo yarn and it's really snuggly it's warm um, I played with kind of the idea of the edging and I thought I was gonna do buttons but I decided not to but I really like how it turned out and it's bright colors I either am drawn to super bright vibrant colors or I really like the natural toned down earthy tones but this was for sure one of the the brighter projects that I've done but it was a lot of fun to make and um I guess my most recent finished project that I'm super excited about is I just finished it yesterday I finished blocking it it's still a little wet just a wee bit damp I was gonna wear it but um I figured I should probably not jump the gun. So it's the Wool and Honey Sweater by Andrea Mowry, and I was working on it the last two episodes. Um, but she's all done. And I love how it turned out. The blocking really helped kind of settle the honeycomb pattern down a little bit, like keep everything flat. Um, I didn't tweak too much. Uh, I think the only thing that I really did was kind of right towards the bottom, right before the ribbing. I think I just evenly decreased maybe like six stitches just to have um, just a tiny touch cinched in. But I really like it. I can't quite get the full effect of how it fits and if the length is exactly how I want because of my belly. Um, Okay, but I'm gonna go ahead and try it on because I'm so excited about it. But it was really fun to knit. Um, super rhythmic. It's it was a interesting finger weight project. You know, this kept me kind of busy, and then the sleeves weren't too bad because you you knit about you know five or so inches, and then it's just ribbing. So at least it's kind of broken up that way. Um, one of the other things that I was going to try with this was I was going to try to do a faux pearl seam on the sides. That's a, something that my aunt, who's a big knitter, I've seen on a lot of her sweaters, she would do like a faux seam on the sides. And I was going to do it, so you can't really <laughs> quite get the full length here, but I think it'll be... I mean, it's kind of down to like just below my waist, so we'll see how it actually fits in a couple months. But here's the where the full seam I was going to do. I started doing it just by um, integrating just one row of purl stitches all the way down. And although this was garter, it still kind of was going to show up a little bit. I'll try to bring it forward to show exactly so here's where i was gonna start it if you can kind of see so it would have had like a kind of a seamed look there but i figured with the boxiness of the sweater i'm not sure it, it might have taken away that shape especially around the sides or it might have had it like lay a little bit funnier so I didn't um go along with it and I didn't rip back I did maybe like an inch and a half on both sides but that's all right so yeah I'm super excited with this pattern it was the first Andrea Mowry pattern that I did um and I it was really well written so many notes and details about how to choose sizing and everything and then I just started putting little handmade tags on my sweaters and I sat down last night and kind of all my old sweaters and recent sweaters I need little tags for and it's just honestly it's the fabric of an old pair of jeans like the button band there was like a linen canvasy fabric that I ripped off of these old jeans and I just used like a little heart stamp that I made in some fabric 
ink and I just I just sewed it on uh, all of the next of the garments because there are some sweaters where it's like is this the front is this the back I never really know and I probably wear it different every single time but that was kind of fun I thought it gave it a nice little finished handmade touch so that was the wool and honey sweater and <clears throat> another project that I was knitting <clears throat> last time was the Arn and Carlos inspired trying to do continental knitting socks and I finished the first one um, and I knit all of it in continental I've been trying to kind of teach myself to feel more comfortable with that and this was a great project to do that on so here's the finished sock <laughs> hopefully the tension's kind of there I haven't yet blocked it I just kind of finished it the other night um, I was following a random pattern that I had found and then I started using um, once I got to the the heel and kind of from there on I used Melody Hoffman, who's B Mandarins, I used her favorite sock recipe for the rest of it. And I really liked that. It was easy to follow. Um, it worked well with how I wanted the sock to look and how the heel, I wanted it to work up. So that was, I'm glad I found that and I decided to go from it. But you can find a YouTube video of hers and she goes through step by step how to do that sock recipe of hers. So one is done and I have I just cast on the other one last night so I've been using little sock needles so instead of normal DPNs I started using actual sock needles and that's been really helping especially as I learn continental so uh, I, I actually really enjoyed knitting those pairs of socks my second pair of socks that I've ever knit and I've been knitting for since I was little um, but these sock needles made a difference so before I think I invest in circulars or interchangeables I'm gonna keep um, trying these sock needles on a few pairs before I invest so um, that was fun to kind of at least get half done and I have them in this little project bag that my mother-in-law sewed for me for my birthday, which is so sweet. And lo and behold, I just found a little teapot from my daughter's play kitchen in there. So I wonder how that got in there. But so that's those. Hopefully I can get the other sock done soon. Um, gosh, I feel like they just take me a really long time. but. I think I'll really enjoy them when they're finished. So that was that. And I talked about it last time, but the next project that I'm gonna cast on is the Morel sweater by Fiber Tails. And in the last episode, I showed the Plotulopi that I purchased to start knitting that. So I think maybe my special treat at the end of the night after we put our daughter down will be starting to work up that swatch so maybe I'll have that ready to show in the next podcast episode but another thing that I was going to start I was really looking forward to it um I'll put all of the maybe I'll try and write figure out how to write names I have like pictures of the things that I'm talking about but I'll put descriptions in the box below um, so another thing that I wanted to start, but then I kind of hit a wall because I realized it's a tank top. It's called the Hella Top. Again, I'll write it. I'll have it somewhere around here. Um, I'm not going to try and pronounce her name because I can't think of how it even looks off the top of my head, but it's a really beautiful kind of like cottony linen-y summer tank top with um, buttons down the middle and a little tie. It's super airy and beautiful looking and delicate and I knew I really wanted to make that and I was thinking oh perfect I'm gonna make it this summer but then thinking about it 
<laughs> trying to figure the sizing and like try it on with like a giant belly is probably not gonna get me the fit I want. So I swatched because I was super excited about it and I had purchased yarn for it. Um, and I like how the fabric turned out. It's got like a really kind of sturdy but giving feel to it. And yeah, I think it's it's gonna work really well for the design once I do it, but I think that'll be on the needles next year. Um, but at least now I kind of have a project ready to go come next year. And the yarn that I'm using is called Juniper Moon Farm Zoe. And it's looks like it's made in Spain and it's um, 60% cotton, 40% linen. So, and I love the color. And it looks like it's kind of one strand of cotton and one strand of linen and then they're plied together. And that's almost kind of what it, what it looks like. But it's kind of knobbly and not super um, consistent, which I like. I like that in, in textured yarn. So this will have to wait a while. <laughs> but I was really excited and it's such a beautiful pattern. So we'll put that on the, on the back burner for now. And so I had worked on that, but it's going to be on a long pause. So I don't have much else in the works because I think I am going to start that uh, morale sweater tonight, or at least swatching for it. And then I did one of our local yarn store. There's a few local yarn stores around here. And one of them had a garage sale where you could um, bring in like your de-stash yarns and they had, you know, everybody kind of could, you could donate it where if they, your items didn't sell and they would be donated or the proceeds that um, came from whatever people donated or brought to the garage sale, then they would get an in-store credit, which was kind of cool and I've never gone to it before, but I went and People were like really serious about it. Um, I think I got like not shot of the way a couple of times, but I was able to go and it, I had a lot of luck. I actually got um, these two skeins there of this Juniper Moon. And I also purchased um, those sock needles. They were a whole set of sock needles for just like $2. So that was, a really fun find and then they had like sweater quantities of yarn and not that I need that but it was a fun opportunity um, kind of just a once a year kind of a thing to do so I did get two sweater quantities worth of yarn and they were very very reasonably priced so that was kind of part of the fun but the first one that I got was skeins of this beautiful mustard goldenrod it's cascade yarns and it's called indulgence and I'm not sure if they still if cascade still has it, it might be discontinued but it is 70% super fine alpaca and 30% angora it's got like a really soft halo to it and it's super soft and I just love this color obviously but um yeah there was 10 skeins of this for a very reasonable price for probably the cost of two of these balls so that was really fun and it smells normal and didn't seem like there was any damage to them, so I snagged that and um, I was tried to have projects in mind when I was looking at the yarns and I was thinking maybe like a petite knits like Sunday sweater or something with this would be beautiful and I've never knit um, with Angora before 
so I'm really excited to try that. I've always wanted to and um, this was a fun way to kind of be able to experiment with new new fibers. So I was excited about that and another sweater quantity that I snagged was again 10 skeins of this beautiful yarn grown especially by a Surrey alpaca named Taco by Blue Ribbon Alpacas in Maryland. Um, so these are, these came all the way from Maryland. Um, it's a two ply DK worsted. These are so soft. There is like so much dimension in the color. You can kind of, the camera kind of does it justice, but it's a really like chocolatey, almost like auburn, burnt, like leaf mold, forest floor, beautiful, soft Surrey alpaca, and it's so soft, they're so drapey. Um, and I've knit with alpaca before, but never one with such a high content. This has 70% Surrey alpaca, and then the other 30% is merino. And so it's a sweater quantity's worth, and again, it was so reasonably be priced I want to like contact Taco and support her more somehow so I'm gonna definitely go on their website and see if they're still they're still um making fibers but again with these two yarns I was or with this set of yarn I was thinking kind of like a maybe like a I don't know petite wool or petite knit pattern to one of the two I think will be for that and then I'm not sure again I haven't knit with this so I need to make sure I pick a pattern that's gonna work well with a drapey fiber and that was so fun it was super fun to find new yarns and especially new fibers that I've never tried um and that was all I purchased yarn wise there but it was really fun and it kind of got me thinking like if maybe when I cast on a project with either of those yarns it would be maybe fun to do a, like a knit along and if people are interested let me know I know there's so many cool ones going on but I was thinking it'd be kind of fun to do one that was like trying a new fiber so if you have never tried knitting with an angora or um, knitting with you know, a hemp yarn or a cotton or, um, you know, quivet or something at any new fiber that you've never tried before, or, you know, like a new sheep breed that you haven't tried. But I thought that would be kind of maybe an idea for like, I know it along if I get the, I don't know, the motivation to, not motivation, but the eagerness to want to do that and if people seem interested that would be kind of fun because there's so many fibers you can that are out there and that you can spin and that you can make beautiful things from and to spin and knit things with those fibers um the first time I did it it opened like a whole new world that there's so many different fibers that you can spin and make beautiful beautiful things from and they all have their own unique um, traits and qualities that make them good for all sorts of projects so maybe a knit along like that would be something that the Little Fern Fibers podcast could think about doing in the future but maybe maybe soon we'll see um and then another yarn purchase that I made recently was at our another local yarn store and it's um, a yarn store that I used to actually work at when my husband and I were kind of on an interim in between moving states and I worked there for just a short amount of time but I loved it and wish I could have stayed a little bit longer but I purchased this hefty bulky skein it is by a woman 
and I think a, another woman that works there now, two women that work there, but one of them is um, a girl that I worked with while I was there just for a short amount of time, but they have a their own little like Etsy store and they sell their yarn at, it's called Cream City Yarn is the store that I purchased it from, but they're called Cast and Dye and all of the yarns are grown, spun, milled, dyed in Wisconsin, which is really special. And um, this particular skein, look at their cool little tag with the sheep, um, is 100% Door County Colombian wool and I got the lake house um, weight which is their fingering weight and like all their names are kind of Wisconsin themed I think like their worsted weight is called supper club because supper clubs are a big thing in Wisconsin um, but yeah it's 450 yards it's beautiful this skein was dyed using acorns um and I've actually you can I looked on like their Instagram and they have a story posted of them actually dying with the acorns and dyeing their yarn so that was so fun to see but it's so bouncy and soft and it's got a beautiful ply to it and I'm so excited to use it um I was thinking maybe socks we'll see I'm thinking socks and the, I was actually thinking about this in the middle of the night last night is if I can get myself to spin soon or after our daughter is born I have beautiful fiber that I've gotten from um, people that I follow on Instagram or that I found on Etsy that I'd like to spin into a fingering weight yarn too and maybe use as like the the cuff and the heel and the toe but I pulled out the fibers that I thought maybe I would maybe put with this and one of them so this is um, a braid by Wee Chickadee and I was thinking this would make a great kind of color contrast um, for the cuff and heel and toe and this is called um, Darkest Before Dawn but when I saw this I snatched it up a few months ago and I have yet to spin it up so I was thinking either that or maybe um this is from red dog red dog yarn uh, I'll put a another link but I thought this would be kind of cool too just very vibrant colorful to pair with this and then maybe just a pair of solely um this cast and dye yarn would be cool too so We'll see if I get around to that, but I kind of, I, I wanted to remember that idea in my head when I was thinking about it at about three in the morning last night. <laughs> so we'll see, but um, another thing that I wanted to maybe mention is that last time I had darned my first pair of socks and I had used uh, my husband, Adam Turns, wooden bird eggs and um, they're inspired by like different bird sizes and they're beautiful and they're all different sorts of sizes and woods and um, he has them in his Etsy store and we were both really excited that I had found a purpose for them using them for darning socks and when I had talked about those a few people asked about it and asked about if he would put them in our Etsy store and or in his Etsy store and he was super excited of course and so he did turn two so far uh, we have a bunch more but he's trying to kind of get a feel for what would be the best size for darning a sock so these two hopefully when this video is up will be in the Little Fern Fibers Etsy store there's a link I'll put a link down there and there's one on our Instagram page but um yeah he was really excited that people seemed interested so if you were um he hand turned these these are made of ash wood uh from Wisconsin and they're so soft 
remember when he first gave me the one that uh, he worked on to hold, it seriously slipped right out of my hand. Now they're not as slippy because he puts like a really great um, finish on them using like beeswax, but they're beautiful and super smooth. There is no possible way your yarn will snag or the fibers will snag on here, but if you're interested, those are going to be up in the Etsy store if you'd like to take a look, but I know he was excited about that. And then, yeah, that's kind of all I have for today. I was just really excited about finishing the wool and honey sweater and, um, I can't wait to get the morale sweater kind of going and trying the potu opi because I've never tried that and uh, um but yeah that's kind of what I'm excited to work on and um yeah that'll feel good to get a new project on the needles and let's see that's kind of all it's I've been doing a lot of knitting and I still have a lot of projects rolling around in my head that I want to kind of set aside time for, but I'm trying to kind of pick things off slowly and write things down when I think about what I might want to do. And I'm not sure if other people have that problem, but it seems like when I should be knitting on the projects that I have in front of me or that I have in progress. I have an equal draw to getting lost in a Ravelry rabbit hole and, you know, just screenshotting beautiful sweaters that I want to make sure I save and can cast on or way down the line. I have way too many of those, but yeah, I, I've been trying to do my best at sitting down with the projects I have and thank you for joining if you are following along I'm really happy to have you here and it's fun to um, kind of see a little community form and connect with people and um, yeah write down where you're from I'd love to know or what you're working on that's always so fun to see um, but other than that I hope Wherever you are, you have needles that are full of stitches or at least other projects and works that are bringing you lots of quiet moments and time to just sit in your own little, own little space for a while. So thanks for watching. Um, yeah, feel free to follow along. I'm happy to have you here and until the next time, whenever that may be, um, take care.